Well, we're on our way to California. We're actually uh, going to celebrate my 10th anniversary of Days in the Wild. We're going back to where I filmed my very, very first show uh, at Bighorn Canyon Ranch. And it's just a, you know, a little game, exotic game ranch in California. It's very uh, popular down here in the Southwest. Um, you know, it's not very particularly hard hunting. Uh, it's a cool place to go to kind of like get some frustrations out, you know, when you don't draw a tag or something. But uh, we went there 10 years ago to film our first show to kind of stretch our legs and see, you know, how we, how we'd be able to perform in the field with the camera and everything else. And, you know, because it was a little bit easier of a haunt where it kind of controlled the environment, that's where we went. So it's kind of like a, a little tribute to that, I'm getting out there. We're actually trying out some new camera equipment on this particular hunt. So it uh, should be cool. Thanks for joining us. So I guess you're wondering why we call this episode Bow Hunting for Groceries. Well, like I mentioned, it's our 10 year anniversary and we're going back to the same game ranch that we filmed our first episode. And it's the kind of place that, you know, even a very, very novice hunter can have uh, success. So I don't really consider it hunting. Uh, it's, it's, to me, it's like going to the grocery store with your bow and shooting a ribeye out of the case. So we're heading out to Cali with our good friends, Bill and Brandon Babish of Letter Rip Outfitters to commemorate our 10th. Well, it was meant to be a very quick in and out hunt. We got into Cali late in the afternoon and we're just gonna bed down for the night, get up early the next morning, hunt that morning, see if our new cinema camera was good for running gun style hunts, kind of try out the new equipment and then get out and back home that afternoon. Well, the trip started off with a bit of excitement. On our way to California, we actually witnessed a tornado that touched down just over the Arizona California border. So one of the cool things about getting to hunt all over the country is get to experience cool things and see cool, cool things. There's a tornado that just touched down right in front of us. I don't know if you can see that or not, but we're gonna switch lenses up here real quick and get a close up for you.
often people say to me, all you TV guys have it easy. All I can do is smile. Not many people know what goes into doing what I do. It's a lot of hard work on and off season. I spend countless hours training, preparing, and studying my sport. So I don't like leaving anything to chance. That's why I surround myself with the best companies and tools, like my Chevy Silverado. Whether I'm training for a hunt, scouting, or getting back into the deep country to chase the big boys, it's with me every step of the way. I'm John Stallone, professional hunter, and Chevy Silverado is my truck. And my home dealer is Van Chevrolet. Well, we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be hunting with uh, Billy and Brandon Babish from Letter Rip Outfitters. I invited them to come home, hunt up here with us, kind of kind of break up the season a little bit. It's one of the cool things about coming out here is you can you can hunt in what would normally be the off season, where it's uh, middle of April, actually almost end of April right now, and. Uh, you know, there's nothing really going on except for turkey, turkey hunting. And to be quite honest with you, turkey hunting in Arizona is not the greatest thing in the whole world. And I don't really love traveling uh, to hunt birds. So it's kind of a nice little hut. It's a nice little deal to kind of break up the season and you know keep everything from getting rusty. Well, we got to the ranch early that morning, um, and, and it's kind of set up in a way that when you get to the actual ranch itself, it's at the highest point. You get there, you fill out your paperwork, and you can actually start glassing right from the offices or the main headquarters of the ranch. You see that point right there? That kind of really pointy one? That's where I shot that other one right down that fence line. Oh, they came and got it. With the, they got a little trailer with the ATV. Yeah. I, I can't even imagine coming rifle hunting here. I could sit right here and shoot. I could sit right here and shoot the whole ranch. I found that Texas doll. Did you? Yep, he's right here. Did you go check out what they? Uh... Well, right off the bat, started glassing up animals and and started filling out my grocery list, and I and I knew I wanted to take a Texas doll even even before I got there. Uh, that's what I shot ten years prior. Um, on my the first time we went out there, and I just kind of wanted to get the same animal, um, you know, to commemorate the anniversary. Well, it didn't take us long to find the doll sheep that I wanted. So, with grocery list in hand, Nick and I took one camera, went to one side of the ranch, and Brandon and Bill took the other camera, went to the other side of the ranch. And uh, well, let's just say that uh, Bill is a much better guide than he is a cameraman. Unfortunately. Billy and Brandon, uh, they both tagged out, but they both missed each other's shots on camera, so I, I think Billy should stick to being a guide and not a cameraman. Well guys, I took the Texas doll one. As you've seen, there was a black and white one that I really wanted. I started looking at them, and this one had been hit right here in the nose, and looks like they got him in his back. And uh, instead of having a wounded animal out there, we just went ahead and I took him. Um, Best thing to do. Not a bad ram anyway, so uh, fun hunt. We had a good time. We all three tagged out, so pretty good day. But 
I don't know if you noticed or not, both their animals already had wounds. And while this was all going on, they had tagged out. We, Nick and I were trying to help. There was another guy hunting the ranch, and he was a novice hunter. Obviously, had no clue what he was doing. We were trying to help him out. Um, it turns out that this guy, he had gotten there a little earlier than us, and he had, he had wounded a bunch of animals. And uh, so Billy and Brandon both took animals that, they, that he had already had wounded, you know, figuring that not to leave those wounded animals out there, they would have been happy with something, you know, more happy with something else, but they were still happy taking these guys off the ranch because they were already wounded. So as I said, unbeknownst to me, we're trying to help out this guy that's just like, obviously has no clue. We were trying to help him get into position, trying to tell him what to do. I even sent Nick with him with the camera uh, so Nick can kind of, well, film him, but mostly to, to help guide him in. And I kind of went around to see if I can't bump these animals towards him and stuff. And, you know, after he shot and missed, well, I thought he missed, but he shot and wounded three animals in front of me, I was like, whoa. It's time to pump the brakes here. I had to tell him he needed to stop hunting. Uh, There's obviously something wrong with his equipment or some of the way he shoots. And we reported him to the ranch owner. That way he wasn't out there just wounding every animal. So it turns out that this guy ends up wounding five different animals. And, you know, it's okay, if you don't know what you're doing, if you're a novice and you need help, that's fine. But you need to be responsible enough to know that if you're missing or if you're wounding animals, that there's something wrong, either with your mechanics or there's something wrong with your setup. Um, and you just need to be able to realize that, be responsible, back up, and say, I'm not hunting till I get this fixed. Well, after that whole debacle, we decided let's switch gears. We're going to go after one of the doll sheep that he already had wounded. Um, they were at the water, so we qu quickly devised a plan to cut them off where they were going to work their way back into the canyon. It's very easy to overlook the minor and insignificant, but on the mountain, it's a game of inches. Every choice has meaning, and success is in the details. Don't overlook the little things because they're often what matter most. Choose wisely. Tenzing. Go further, hunt longer. Well, we found them watering and we decided we were gonna cut them off on their way back to the canyon. So we quickly got in front of them and got set up into a position that allowed them to walk past us at 45 yards. And the no cam and schwacker made quick work of them and the grocery basket was full.
on the walk. Well, that's all she wrote. We've been after this guy for the better part of the morning. He gave us the slip a few times. Went on the other side of this ridge. There's another hunter. He bumped them up and we kind of cut them off and they passed right in front of us. I had a chip shot at 30 yards. And uh, I didn't want to take the shot because he, he was below us and I was kind of afraid that if I got a pass through that I might, you know, run the risk of hitting him. swung around. They came over here to drink some water. And they were heading back to drop down this ridge and we just kind of slipped over this berm. They couldn't see us because of the berm. And we just popped over here. I popped the squat. The first one caught a glance at me so he started trotting down the road and he was going to go over. And uh, you know, I just picked my spot, ranged ahead of him. And once he hit there, all that practice doing pop-up 3D and you know, shooting runners and stuff like that, that's that's why you practice it. So you can take a, a shot 40 yards on an animal that's walking, you know. That's a perfect double lung. Might even caught part of the heart on that. Oh, he's down. Let's go over here and take a look at him. Slide up here and grab this arrow first. I saw it go right through him. straight down looks pretty good pass through and these gold tip hunters man they're tough arrows this thing pretty much hit a rock right there yep. tough and straight what more can you ask for out of an arrow stick that bad boy back in here See if I can get these closed up a bit That broadhead did its job. <laughs> Let's uh, take this pack off here. I'm pretty sure this is the one that that guy shot at and missed. Cause look right here. You see that? Nicked him. Yeah, nicked him good. See, that's where he nicked him. He was shooting at that other one. This guy was below him, and he shot over the top of the back of the one. 
It looks like he nicked this guy right here. And sure enough, he nicked him pretty good. There you go. That's a Texas doll. And they call this actually this one a cinnamon Texas doll because it's got that cinnamon color. Uh, you know, he's pretty nice, pretty nice curl on him. You know, he's probably gonna go about 90 inches, maybe, maybe a little above that, which I think is considered a gold medal. I don't really know. I don't really hunt exotics very much. It's not my gig, but. There he is. Well, myself, Brandon, and Billy all shot animals, all had the simultaneous thought process, even though we weren't communicating to each other, to shoot animals that had been wounded, because that's what real hunters do. You, you, you feel you're a steward. You're a, you, you know, you feel connected with the, the animals that you hunt. And uh, I thought it was pretty amazing that we all had our hearts set on something else and decided to shoot something different because those animals were wounded. We all didn't want to leave those animals out there wounded. Um, and, and I was I was pretty amazed at and not I want to give ourselves a pat on the back, but you know, at the same time it just it it goes to show those people that live the true hunter's life um, where their mind's at. And I felt like we righted some wrongs that uh, another hunter created, and it, it, it felt good. Well, we quickly processed those animals, got them loaded up in the truck, and drove them back to Scottsdale and brought them to Scott's Wildlife Taxidermy. Yeah, Scott, I'm pulling up right now. Okay, see you in a bit. Good, good. What do you got for me? Oh, well, we got a cinnamon colored Texas doll. All right. Kind of a bruiser. He was just. What kind of a hunt was that? Ah, uh, we just went to California. It's a game ranch, you know. Just kind of step above grocery shopping. <laughs> well, I like to call it. Right. Right. Grocery, grocery shopping with the bow. Right. Well, it looks good. Yeah, it's a quick it's hunt. It's a meat hunt. It's a little fun, you know. Kind of check out some new, some new equipment. See how our newer camera equipment's working and. Right. Just right. uh, just an excuse to get out for a day and right. enjoy some friends. I could use one of those. Yeah, you gotta come <laughs> out, man. I'll come out with you. you I can use go. one of those. But uh, no, it was a good time. Good. The weather was good. It was good to us. Nice and cool. Good, good. But good. just nice to get out of the heat. Nice little tornado y'all had, huh? Yeah. <laughs> that was cool. Uh, we might we might change the show to Storm Chasers. There you go. <laughs> so. There you go. There you cool. Go. We might have to beef up the truck. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Put a little turd on the top. All right, yeah, so I think we're probably just going to do a shoulder on it. Sounds good to me. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode. And for you new hope bow hunters out there, uh, you know, take the time to take a hunter safety course and or have a seasoned hunter mentor you. Uh, nobody's going to think differently of you if you ask questions and want to learn 
Um, but anti-hunters and hunters alike will be offended and will have an opinion of you, opinion of you if you just run about the mountain willy-nilly, flinging arrows all over the place. Um, so take the time, learn the, the trade, so to speak, learn the ethics involved, and uh, we'll see you out in the field. Thanks for joining us. All right, so uh, we got back into town here and got our stuff put away, took a quick shower. I'm just gonna get this uh, back strap marinated and uh, I'm just gonna show you what I do with it really. Um, I like to trim it up. A lot of the gaminess, especially in like sheep and goats and stuff like that, it is in the fat. So I trim a lot of this fat off the back here. As you can see, this the back portion is pretty, pretty darn fatty, and I just, you know, take a sharp knife and I'll make my way down and, you know, trim it up. So, yeah, just keep making your way down and try not to get as much, you know, try to keep as much meat from, you know, trimming away too much meat and just stick it to the fat and that silver skin. That silver skin is kind of like one of the things that makes people not like, um, you know, eating game meat or, or you know, even even beef and stuff like that. You get a crappy part, uh, crappy cut of beef. Usually, it's when somebody didn't trim away this silver skin or some of the fascia, and you're, you know, becomes chewy because you got to chew through that. Thick fascia. So let me t show you a little trick I learned about taking off silver skin and, and fascia. So you kind of got to get it started. Once you get it started here, you go along the fascia and you pull up and you, I don't know if you can see that real well or not, but and you just go like this with your, with a knife. And it comes up without any meat attached to it. Uh, and what's kind of cool is it gives that little graininess on top of the meat right here. Um, so it allows it to soak in marinades and stuff like that better, which I, I like. I'm almost about done here trimming this guy up. Um, as you can see, I got a couple spots where I kind of got a little bit of fash and a little bit of fat on it, but grand scheme of things it's it's pretty well trimmed here and I'm not gonna be super duper picky on all this stuff uh, some of the things I do to get rid of these areas like this is I just kind of like put a little little cuts in the fascia so when it comes time to eat it, it's not so uh, not so tough basically and, uh... Well, now that we got it trimmed up here, I'm gonna basically, um, I'm just gonna salt it in both sides and then I'm gonna put it in a Ziploc bag and create my marinade. All right, so I'm just gonna take some uh, sea salt and I'm gonna salt both sides. A lot, actually, I put a lot of salt. Chipotle, so it's just a ground chipotle powder. Um, you can use chili powder, but I, I think this kind of gives a nice smoky flavor to it. And I do the same thing on both sides here. And really, this is good to go on the grill just like this if you like, but I'm a marinade guy, I like my stuff kind of marinated. Get that both, and I'll let that rest a little bit so it kind of gets into the meat a bit, and then uh, we'll do the marinade. Well, I let this rest for about 15 minutes. 
now I'm going to create my marinade. So I kind of just, I roll it up on itself here a little bit. And do a deal like that. Kind of this little pinwheel. And I put it in this bag. I'm going to wash my hands real quick. There you go. Now, uh, basically, I'll get stuff out of the way and I'll start making the marinade. I'll just take some uh, red chili flakes. Just kind of do that to your taste. I like my stuff spicy, so. Um, and then I have agave nectar. It kind of gives it like a little sweet sweetness to it. And uh, I'd say probably about four tablespoons of that. And I like to use avocado oil. Now we took out a lot of that fat. We don't want it to be real dry, so I'll put a little bit of avocado oil in there, about a tablespoon and a half. Um, a little bit more in the salt. And then uh, lastly, I'm, you really want to probably do this with buttermilk. Um, unfortunately, I'm allergic. <laughs> I'm a little allergic to milk, so I, uh, I use hazelnut milk. And I just kind of douse out the hazelnut milk. And, Pretty much until it's covered. And uh, squeeze out all the air. And I'll let that sit and marinate for at least 24 hours. I like 36. So that's why I like to kind of do this midday and have it ready for the following evening. And uh, just put it in the refrigerator just like that.